in today's episode what i want to talk about is really this is my opportunity to just kind of document what i'm doing to build a multi seven and potentially even eight or even nine figure company. That's like the vision that we have with the business that I'm currently building. And that's really gonna be the business that I'm committed to. When you're growing a business, it's really important. The first thing that you need to do is understand your avatar. And I know you probably hear this a lot, but you need to understand your avatar. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Seven Figure Fitness Business Podcast. It's your host, Iggy Odigizua, here to help you stay calm, change lives, and have business on your terms. Guys. In today's episode, what I want to talk about is really, this is my opportunity to just kind of document what I'm doing to build a multi seven and potentially even eight or even nine figure company. That's like the vision that we have with the business that I'm currently building. And that's really going to be the business that I'm committed to building for the next five to eight years, potentially maybe for the next decade. Right. So I'm 30 right now. So this is going to be the business that I want to build for the next 10 years, just kind of wild to think about. Now, one of the things that a lot of things happen when you're in the beginning and early stages of a business, one of the most important things that you have to be able to figure out and you have to nail down is who do you really want to serve at a high level? And what happened between last month and this month? Last month, business took like 86 calls, produced about $117,000. This month, the first 15 days in June, business taking like 22 calls and produced $216,000 in revenue, All right, And that shift came from us spending, I spent like 13 hours thinking through who our ideal highest value customer is. Now, what I was thinking about with that was who's going to value what we do the most, meaning who's going to have the biggest return on investment from us deploying Charlie into their business and went through and we determined like you need to have like a legion source already. You need to already be successfully generating leads and selling and making sales from the leads you're generating. You need to already have that mechanism in place because what Charlie is able to do is dramatically increase the volume of bookings that that lead source is producing simply because it's more efficient at having conversations with people, qualifying them and getting them booked onto the calendar. It's a lot more efficient in doing that. And then the other thing that I was thinking about, well, what we can do when Charlie gets plugged into a business and we build out the CRM and fully integrate it, our show rates dramatically increase when Charlie's working the messages. So who's going to benefit from going from like a 50% show rate to like a 70, even 80% show rate, right? If a business is already generating a high number of volume, they have a lot of leads coming in. They're getting a good amount of bookings already. Maybe their show rate isn't exactly where it needs to be, but they're still profitable. So if we can increase their show rate by 20 or even 30%, we dramatically increase their bottom line, assuming their sales conversion doesn't change. And so we have a calculator that I use to determine the kind of value that we can add to an already existing business when we plug Charlie in it based on the numbers that we're seeing in our own business and in our clients' businesses. I mean, so we're able to do that mainly because we just went upstream and started deploying Charlie into businesses where it was going to produce much higher value because of the value and the increase of value that we're going to be able to add to those business, not because of who we are, but mainly because of who they are and how established they already are, we were able to double what we can charge to get Charlie plugged into those businesses because it had to be custom work, right? So it's more work to get it deployed into their business, but we're able to charge twice the amount of what we could charge the current client that we've been serving. When you're growing a business, it's really important. The first thing that you need to do is understand your avatar. And I know you probably hear this a lot, but you need to understand your avatar and legit spend three, to four to five, even a couple weeks, just obsessing over your avatar, right? And thinking through who is your avatar? What makes you unique in terms of like your approach? How do you do the things that you do? Why do you do it the way that you do it? What makes you so unique and what, who do you want to serve at a really high level? Thinking through your avatar, but then thinking about the offer that you want to present to them. We're looking at our sales numbers this last week because I'm building the sales floor from scratch. So I'm no sales guru by any stretch of the imagination, but I have a decent closing record. Like historically I've closed like around 50 to 60%. And the reason isn't because I'm so good at sales, but it's because of the offer that we craft. 
So we're sitting down with one of the uh, sales floor for a different offer that we have. And I was going through how they were pitching the offer because I've taken over the sales management for that team. So I was going through the offer and looking at like some of the main objections that they're getting. I was like, well, the main reason why you guys haven't been closing the way that you need to is because the offer isn't that good. So it requires more skill to get the person to buy when the offer isn't as good. Meanwhile, we have this offer here that we don't have as skilled of a sales rep selling the offer, but they're closing at a higher clip, mainly because they have a much stronger offer that the, the offer does the selling for them. So if you find yourself having to convince people and having to handle objections and trying to like stack it to where like you're pre-handling as much objections as possible so that when it gets to the offer, you're kind of pinning them in a corner where you're forcing them to buy. That's not the position that you want to sell from. And that's not the frame that you want to sell from. You have to craft the offer that you're pitching and presenting people on the sales call in such a way that they can't help but say yes. And so I was going through yesterday and we're analyzing their offer and looking like, how are they presenting it? And then one of the things that we did was we went through, deconstructed it. I was like, well, when you're explaining the offer, like walk me through how you're explaining it. And one of the things that I noticed early on is that one, they're not looping back in the person's pain points and why they want to do what they need, need to do. But then two, as they're explaining the offer, they're not painting the vacation of the results that they're going to be getting. So we're comparing the offer because I used to sell fitness packages and close at a decent rate. So I was looking at the offer where I had the least amount of objections and how I would pitch it to where I got most of the people that I got on the phone with like 60 to 70%. And the way that we would pitch it before is as we're explaining each phase of the program, we're communicating the results that the client is going to experience. So like phase one's metabolic reset. During this phase, there's three steps we're gonna take you through. All right, step one is this. And while you're going through step one, you're gonna, this is what you're going to experience. Remember you said you were feeling like your joints are aching. This is what a lot of our clients say they experience in step one. Great example is Debbie, who was struggling with like an autoimmune disease. She had a high inflammation in her joints and they were very painful. But when we went through this lifestyle nutrition detox, the first thing she said she noticed was that her joint pain was no longer there and she had dropped several pounds. All right, so this is phase one. This is what you're gonna start to experience as you're going through this process. And when I'm telling them what they're going to experience, I'm using the goals that they set, the things that they said they were they're struggling with during the sales call, and the information that I gathered from them in the discovery process. And I'm weaving that into the pitch. I'm weaving that into the offer and showing them, demonstrating to them as I'm explaining what the offer is, how this is going to solve the problem that they said they had. Right. And I'm pulling examples of clients who were struggling in a similar way. So not only can I demonstrate how this is going to solve the problem, I'm weaving examples of others who had the same exact problem into the process to show them, hey, not only did this work for this client, but this can work for you as well. And I'm doing that for every single phase that I'm communicating to them and doing it in a way where I'm not giving them too much information. I'm just painting the picture of the vacation that I'm going to take them on if they choose to work with. When that's done properly, money isn't a true objection. The only objection is like, how do we make this work? So instead of them saying, I can't afford it, I'm like, how do we make this work for you? And now we're working together, trying to figure out how they can get the money together to sign up for this program, because now they're convinced they really want this because they've seen the vacation that the offer is going to take them on. And so when you're thinking about your business, if you're struggling with sales, if you're struggling with lead gen, all that really boils down to the offer and how you communicate it. If you can communicate the offer of what you're delivering and the vacation that you're offering your clients who decide to sign up with you, communicate that in the ad, communicate that in the landing page, communicate that in your messaging process, communicate that in your post booking, follow-up appointment reminder sequence, and then communicate that in your actual pitch. It's so funny, like when I'm looking, when I was going through their sales process, it's like nothing from the messaging that led to the person getting on the call was actually being communicated in the sales process. And so you want to make sure there's congruency between the ads that people see and the process that they're going through to show up to the call so that you have a higher throughput throughout the entire process. You're closing more of the offers that you're making. And in order to do that, you need an offer that truly communicates the vacation that they're going on and the journey that you're going to take them through to transforming their lives forever. And then as you're communicating each aspect, 
you're explaining why what they did before didn't work. So not only am I explaining, hey, this is phase one, this is what we're going to do, this is the result that you're looking to get. And remember when you said that you tried this and it didn't work? Well, this is why it didn't work because this is what it was that thing was doing. And so now, not only I did I already get them to throw stones at the things that they've tried before and eliminate those things as an option moving forward, now I'm reinforcing that with the way that I'm presenting the offer to them. And so it's a powerful first step. And it's one of those foundational steps in a business. If you want to build a big business, you need a great offer and you need to present it to the part of the audience or to the avatar that's going to value it the most. And it's not because of what you do or who you are, but really it's because of where they're at, the pain that they're in and how motivated they are to solve that problem. So if you're selling to fitness professionals, like if you're selling fitness packages, you want to target people who are going to value what you do the most, who are in the most pain, or who are most desperate for your solution. If you're a B2B service provider, you want to target the, the avatar that's going to get the most value from the thing that you do and from the problem that you solve. Who's going to get the biggest return on investment from having this problem solved? Target that and then craft your offer in such a way where you're communicating the results and the problem that you solve from the time to see the ad to the time to get on the call and then you're reinforcing it and tying it down throughout the entire sales process so hope you find it helpful take some time think through your avatar think through your audience think through your offer and obsess over it get feedback on your offer find out like what do you need to change if you've had sales calls if you have current clients that you're talking to interview them and find out what they love the most about your program and why they signed up in the first place. Take detailed notes on those things and that's going to give you a basis from which you can craft a really irresistible offer that people truly feel stupid saying no to. The man who has the best book on this is Alex Ramosi, Under Million Dollar Offers. If you've not seen that book, if you've not read it or listened to the audible, go do yourself a favor and go listen to it and spend an enormous amount of time obsessing over crafting an irresistible offer. It's going to serve you very, very well. It's going to set your business up for success. If you found it helpful, go ahead and like and share this with somebody else you think this might help, and I'll catch you in the next one. This is.